The Garrett CSI Pro metal detector was designed for use in the recovery of metallic crime scene evidence in all terrains, including shallow water searching. Its 5-inch by 8-inch size double D configuration search coil is ideal for working through tight spaces, through rocks, and in trashy areas. Other key features of the CSI Pro are 40 levels of iron discrimination, which can be adjusted to help separate good targets from bad, an iron audio feature to audibly identify iron targets, manual and automatic ground balance to optimize performance in mineralized soils, fast recovery speed for separating adjacent targets, notch discrimination to eliminate undesired targets, and a target depth indicator. The target ID cursor on the LCD's upper scale helps identify targets, and the digital target ID below provides an even more specific value to identify targets more precisely. The CSI Pro is fully waterproof to 10 feet, or three meters, for use in shallow water evidence recovery. This detector is lightweight and comes complete with a set of headphones which can be used in almost all hunting environments, including wading into bodies of water. If you're going to completely submerge the headset, there are optional headphones available from Garrett which are completely waterproof. The CSI Pro is ideal for recovering bullets, shell casings, discarded metallic evidence, stashed weapons, and even for use in arson evidence recovery. The CSI Pro can be stored fully assembled in this tactical storage bag, which includes five Velcro pouches to house additional crime scene search and recovery equipment. In addition, the CSI Pro ships with the CSI Pro Pointer, a handheld pinpointer that speeds the recovery of small evidence items that have been detected. Assembly of your new CSI Pro is very simple. First, select the upper and lower stem assembly. Holding it in front of you, select the lower cam lock. Twist the lower cam lock clockwise to loosen it. Then, loosen the upper cam lock by twisting it counterclockwise. Depress the spring clips to extend the shaft. Next, press the two mounting washers firmly into place in the openings at the base of the lower stem. Slide the search coil onto the stem and insert the threaded bolt through the holes on the lower stem and search coil. Hand tighten the search coil assembly with the wing nut. Loosen and remove the upper cam lock collar. Slide it over the S stem's spring clips. Next, depress the spring clip in the S-stem and insert the control housing's S-stem through the upper cam lock into the upper stem. Hand tighten the cam lock collar, being careful not to over tighten. It is important to engage the spring clip into the first stem opening in order to maintain battery compartment access. Depress the spring clip in the lower stem and adjust to the most comfortable operating length. Then hand tighten the lower stem cam lock collar. Wrap the cable snugly around the stem with the first turn of the cable going over the stem. Insert the search coil connector into the four pin connector on the left side of the control housing. Notice the pin orientation of the connector before attempting to insert it. It's important to fully insert the connector to ensure proper connecting and sealing. Then thread the collar into place until it is hand tight. If the O-ring is properly seated, the connector's collar can be easily tightened. If this collar is difficult to turn, the O-ring is not seated properly. The CSI Pro's headphones connect on the right side of the control housing. Notice that this is a two-pin connector which also must be aligned properly. Again, push the connector fully into place before tightening the collar. Secure the headphone cable under the arm cuff by pressing it into the headphone cable clip.
To power on the CSI Pro, press the power button in the bottom left corner. To turn off the detector, press and hold this button for one second until the detector makes a second beep. When you have changed detector settings and wish to restore the CSI Pro to its factory settings, press and hold the power button for five seconds, waiting until the detector produces a fast double beep. All metal items encountered by the CSI Pro are referred to as targets. Garrett's exclusive target ID technology provides two indicator scales to help identify targets. The lower scale is the CSI Pro's discrimination pattern setting. These dark segments on the lower scale indicate what targets your detector will sound on. And when it sounds, a single segment will appear on this upper scale to show what you have found. The target ID legend just above will then help you to identify the target. Ferrous, or iron targets, will indicate on the left side. Non-ferrous targets that are thin or that have low conductivity will indicate in the middle. Thick or high conductivity targets will indicate toward the right. There are 20 upper scale graphic segments for target ID. Every metallic target you encounter will create a target ID cursor on the upper scale. The CSI Pro's digital target ID system also provides a specific target value to help identify targets more precisely. Targets are identified on the LCD by number, with items with lower numbers being the most ferrous. The most conductive targets register toward the high end of the scale. The digital target ID is a more precise version of the target ID cursor seen in the upper scale. Notice as I pass this bullet in front of the search coil. The digital target ID for this bullet reads between 70 or 73, depending upon target orientation. Each target ID cursor above it has a width of five digital points so you notice that the target ID cursor is below the number 70 when the target ID reads 71 or 73. This system, used in conjunction with the audio target signals, provides you with more information. It is important to understand that the CSI Pro's detection depth can exceed target ID depth. In other words, you will sometimes hear faint, deeper targets that do not provide any target ID. Target values can vary based upon the orientation of the target in the ground, the amount of ground mineralization, and other factors. It is important to practice in the field to learn how these factors affect target ID. This depth scale will help you determine how deeply you'll have to dig to recover a target that you find. Your CSI Pro has eight settings for sensitivity. Use higher sensitivity settings for very small or very deep targets. Use lower sensitivity levels in locations where the detector is behaving erratically. Several factors can cause your detector to appear to behave erratically. Outside electrical interference, highly mineralized soil, excessive metallic trash, or the presence of other metal detectors. Often these interferences can be resolved with proper ground balance, discrimination, or by changing frequencies without having to reduce sensitivity. The CSI Pro is capable of operating at four slightly different frequencies in order to minimize the interference from electrical sources, such as power lines or from other metal detectors. If you encounter interference from another detector during close proximity searches, simply hold down the pinpoint button and press the plus or minus sensitivity push buttons. Find the frequency with the least amount of interference and resume searching. It is important to be properly ground balanced when you're metal detecting to maintain optimal performance. In many areas the CSI Pro will be used the ground mineralization will not be a factor at all. Where the ground does create unwanted signals or erratic performance, 
the detector can be automatically or manually ground balanced. For automatic ground balance, press and hold the ground balance push button while bouncing or pumping the search coil from one to eight inches above the ground. When there is minimal audio response from the ground, release the push button and begin searching. For manual ground balance, press the ground balance button and release it. The ground balance mode will be indicated on the LCD. Then use the plus or minus notch to scrim buttons to obtain a minimal audio response as the search coil is bounced above the ground. If low tones are being produced, use the plus button to increase the ground balance settings. If high tones are being produced, decrease the setting using the minus notch to scrim button. To exit the manual ground balance mode, press and release the ground balance push button again. The CSI Pro's Tone ID feature produces three distinct audible tones based on a target's metal type and conductivity. Ferrous targets, such as nails, iron, steel core projectiles, and some weapons can produce a low tone. Non-ferrous targets generally produce a medium tone. Examples of such medium tone targets are lead bullets, foil, and small to medium brass. The CSI Pro produces a high tone for non-ferrous targets with higher conductivity, such as larger brass and copper casings, or some plated weapons. Knives and guns made primarily of steel may produce any of the three sounds based on the size of the object and its orientation in the ground. Scan several test targets to better understand what tones they can produce. The CSI Pro's proportional audio and tone roll audio features allow the operator to better judge a target's size, shape, and depth. Very small or deep targets will sound faint, while larger objects may produce louder audio. This advanced audio also provides fast recovery speed to help separate adjacent targets. The CSI Pro includes two detection modes, a custom discrimination pattern and a zero discrimination pattern. Simply press the mode button to change modes. The factory preset for the custom mode is designed to detect every type of metal. All 12 lower scale discrimination pixels are switched on and the iron discrimination is set to zero. To modify your custom mode setting, use the iron discrim and notch discrim push buttons to customize the setup to your desired discrimination settings. Changes made in the custom mode will be retained when the CSI Pro is switched off. The factory preset for the zero mode is the same as the factory preset for the custom mode. However, any changes you make to the zero mode will not be retained when the detector is switched off. Use the zero mode when you wish to find all types of metal or when the material of the desired object is unknown. Any of the CSI Pro's 12 discrimination pixels can be switched on or off based upon your preference to eliminate items from detection. There are two methods of setting discrimination notches. You can use the plus or minus notch discrim push buttons to move the cursor to the left or right. Next, press the elim push button to eliminate or activate the corresponding pixel located on the lower scale, directly below the target ID cursor. In the second method, pass the target to be accepted or rejected over the search coil. Check to make certain there is an appropriate indication on the upper scale of the graphic display. Then, press the elim button to either reject or accept the specific target. CSI Pro's LM push button can also be used to find specific metal items. For example, if a particular shell casing is being sought at a crime scene, scan a matching shell casing with the CSI Pro while in the zero mode.
Note where the target ID cursor appears when the casing is scanned. In this case, use the maximum iron to scrim setting of 40. Next, use the notch disc and a limb push buttons to switch off all the pixels except the one for the desired target range. Depending upon how the shell casing is laying in the ground, its target ID may shift a little. Therefore, your ability to find it will be enhanced by turning on an additional pixel on either side. The CSI Pro is now programmed to find the desired shell casing or casings based on the conductivity of the matching casing that was scanned. The CSI Pro features a high resolution iron discrimination adjustment. While operating in either of the discrimination modes, the level can be adjusted from zero, no iron discrimination, to 40, maximum iron discrimination. Use the plus or minus iron disc buttons to adjust the iron discrimination up or down. The small two digit number above the words iron disc on the LCD indicates the current setting. Let's demonstrate the use of iron discrimination with this nail. It reads as high as 26. I run the iron discrimination up to 26. And now you can hear that the nail is no longer audibly reported, other than an occasional click or pop. It is important to understand that you only want to use just enough iron discrim to lose undesired iron targets. Many weapons sought by crime scene investigators may be constructed of iron or steel, so the use of iron discrimination may not be feasible with all searches. The CSI Pro also includes an iron audio feature that allows you to hear the discriminated iron targets, which would normally be silent. Simply press and release the iron audio button to switch this feature on or off. When it is on, the words iron audio appear on the LCD. In either of the two modes, the iron audio function produces a low tone ID to identify the discriminated iron to help you avoid digging an undesired target. The iron audio feature is even more impressive at identifying bottle caps. Since they are flat and have pretty good conductivity, they can trick some detectors into thinking they are a coin or some other good target. To demonstrate, I'll use the CSI Pro in zero mode with iron disc set to 35 and iron audio off. Pass the search coil over the bottle cap. Note the subtle breaks and inconsistencies of target response, indicating it might be iron. Now, switch on iron audio and pass the coil over the bottle cap again. The distinctive low, medium, low response indicates that this target is unmistakably iron. The iron audio feature is recommended for use in checking targets for iron content. In order to better understand your CSI Pro metal detector, conduct bench tests with a variety of test items. Use targets that will appropriately test how to program in desired levels of iron discrimination and the detector's iron audio feature. Use both large and small targets at varying distances and in various orientations to the search coil to better understand the proportional audio characteristics of this machine. These bench tests will also improve your understanding of the CSI Pro's digital target ID and tone ID on various test targets. For the best results when using your CSI Pro, always keep your search coil at a constant height and parallel to the ground. Walk slowly as you scan your search coil in a straight line from side to side at a speed of about three feet or one meter per second. Overlap each sweep by about half of the search coil's width to avoid missing any targets. In order to achieve the deepest depth of detection, avoid lifting the search coil at the end of your swing. Pinpointing is very simple with the CSI Pro. We'll go through a few different uh, variations of how you can pinpoint. But for a test target, I've got a nine millimeter brass casing and I've got a little hole here that I've dug. It's about two or three inches deep, so I'm gonna drop it down in there. 
covered up real well. And then for test purposes, I've got this little blue plastic chip I'm going to place right on top of the spot. Just for demonstration purposes, that marks where our target is so we can see how the pinpointing comes together. The standard technique for pinpointing involves using the pinpoint button, so we'll demonstrate that first. What you want to do is find a target and identify its suspected location. Then come off to the side of where you believe the target is, press the pinpoint button, and then go back over the target. Note where you get the strongest audio and the strongest level on the LCD across the top, going back and forth, and then forward and backward. X marks the spot. Where you center it like that and have the strongest audio and the strongest LCD meter across the top, that's going to be the center of where your target area is. Another pinpointing technique that you can use with this double D style coil is to pinpoint off either the tip or the tail of the coil. First I'll pinpoint where I believe the target is and then push or pull away from it and watch the meter and listen to the audio as it falls off. So first let's find our suspected target, use the pinpoint button, got a strong signal right there centered and now I'm going to push away from it. And where that audio has fallen off and the meter has dropped off, it should be right behind the tail of my coil. Now in a similar fashion, I can go just the opposite way. I can pinpoint the target and pull it back toward me. And where the meter has fallen off and where the audio has dropped off, my target should be right in front of the coil. This makes for a very tight area of recovery, a small dig hole, and a faster means of retrieving your target. Still another technique that some people use is what we call the DD wiggle, and this can be done without even using the pinpoint button by making quick wiggle movements of the coil to get it dead center over the target. So again, I'll find a target area where I suspect something to be, and then you can just come off to the side of it and begin wiggling real tight, you know, an inch or two apart, moving that coil toward the suspected area. And as I'm getting a very repeatable signal like this, I can move forward and back and side to side. And where I've got a very consistent sound like that, my target's going to be right under the middle of that coil where I've centered it. In some cases, you may be asked to recover a very tiny piece of metallic evidence. And in those situations, you can actually retune to the target or narrow the detection field when you're pinpointing. So we'll go through a little demonstration here of how to narrow down your pinpoint area. In this retuning scenario, I'm going to find my strong signal and go back over it. And where I've got the strongest signal, I can hold down the pinpoint button, release, and depress it again very quickly. And it's narrowed down the audio field to where I have to be just dead over it to pick up that signal. If it was an extremely tiny item, I could actually do it again. And as you can see, as I get even an inch or two away from the target, I'm not picking it up. I have to be dead center right over to pick it up. So retuning to the target can help you with very small items that you're trying to recover. The CSI Pro can be submerged to a maximum depth of 10 feet or three meters in either freshwater or saltwater environments. Use of the detector below these depths can cause leaks and void the manufacturer's warranty. The headphones included with the CSI Pro are standard land search headphones. They can be used for searching along waterways and for waiting. If you're going to completely submerge the headset, there are optional headphones available from Garrett which are completely waterproof. The CSI Pro's LCD gives a continual indication of the remaining battery life. This battery level indicator displays four illuminated bars when the detector is operating with fresh or fully charged batteries. The CSI Pro will remain fully functional until the batteries need to be replaced. When the battery level indicator is down to one bar, it's time to replace the batteries or recharge them. Nickel metal hydride rechargeable AA size batteries can be used 
or regular AA size alkaline batteries. Expect 20 to 40 hours of operation depending upon the type of batteries used and their quality. Access and replace the batteries by rotating the battery cover housing one quarter turn counterclockwise. Pull and remove the cap to slide battery holder out. Remove batteries when the CSI Pro will be stored for longer than 30 days. Avoid extreme temperatures as much as possible, such as storing the detector in an automobile trunk during the summer or outdoors in sub-freezing weather. Keep the detector clean. Wipe the control housing with a damp cloth when necessary. Disassemble the stem and wipe it and the search coil clean with a damp cloth. Replace the protective cover on the connector when not using the headphones. Garrett offers a number of quality accessories to protect and complement your CSI Pro metal detector. Coil covers to lengthen the lifespan of your search coil, accessory search coils for the CSI Pro, including a larger 8.5 by 11 inch double D coil, which offers greater detection depth and ground coverage area, and tools to assist with the recovery of your pinpointed targets. This instructional video gives you a real head start on learning the Garrett CSI Pro. Study the user manual for more details on specific functions of this detector.